Welcome to Home Studio Production Basics. This is a series all about helping you and the quality of things you produce from a home studio situation. This time around, it's episode nine, all about my soundboard, which is used in tandem with software, something called Farago. Yeah, I've been pronouncing it wrong all these years, Farago, but it's actually <laughs> Farago, as well as my Elgato Stream Deck. So I'm going to show you how these two things work to help me have a soundboard here for all of my live streams and recorded videos. So we jump right in and let me show you the hardware side of it first. This is an Elgato Stream Deck XL. Now I am also using a Stream Deck Mini here uh, at my desk. The reason I have two is because sometimes I wanna control camera shots with this and then I wanna be able to utilize my soundboard with the larger amount of buttons here. But the basics are this. I'll pull up Farago, make sure that's active, and then I can hit any sound effect I want. This is kind of showing you here the end result of what I'm producing. And what are the sound effects I have here on my, my number one page? They're all the basics. Applause, boo, the wah-wah, the buzzer, the rim shot, the drum roll. Um, obviously, I have my live intro broadcasting live, live and worldwide and i've got an nbc version of that broadcasting live and worldwide here's brody brazil all right so there's that there's all these stingers number one what's after number one number two. what about after that number three if i need uh, a little bit of laughter <laughs> if something is Toilet humor? You get thrown under the bus? I don't really know what the bell ding is for. If you make a good point. Oh, got it, yeah. If something comes to a complete halt. Uh, we're in. We're near San Francisco, so there's a cable car. Always good with the air horn. Then I've got some Mario sound effects here. Right, so there's all that, but the other thing is, if I hit one of these and I want to fade it out, casting live and worldwide, I've got this button here too. So right now you're only seeing the buttons. I'm gonna go through all these here first, and then I'll get to the software side and show you kind of what's under the hood, what's making this all happen. But this is page one. Now here's page two, and if you're asking me, well, what's the reasoning here? Why do I put things on one page versus the next? I I honestly don't know. Page one is kind of the basics. Uh, page two, maybe these are the deeper cuts. There's a lot of work-related stuff here. There's the NBC Sports Baseball theme. There's our pre- and post-game live theme. There's the NBC Sports theme for hockey. I've got some shark stuff here. Right, so I've got all the organ music. I just added these, by the way. I color coordinate these, and that's just to see it easier, to understand it easier. I'll fade this out. Uh, I've got some just natural sounds, soothing sounds, from the ocean to the rain. If you want to throw some thunder in there, that got intense pretty fast. Do you want to add some crickets to that? But let's say I want to get rid of all that. I fade it all out. Then I've got obvious stuff here on top. The dream sound effects. The car peeling out. I, I guess I use that one often. The phone ringing. If you want to play some hockey, we've got a slap shot. We've got a crossbar. We've got a hockey stop. So that gives you an idea of page two. And then page three is actually kind of the end of the sound effects. I've also got here buttons for a bunch of different applications I use. Companion, which uh, is part of controlling my stream deck. Uh, Chrome, opening a browser. VLC is a video player. I'll show you how I run a speed test in just a second. I use Apple Keynote for a lot of my videos and presentations. In fact, the very beginning of this one. I also think this is very cool too here on the stream deck is how I can set a one minute timer. Now... I'll come back to this. I'll revisit it <laughs> once the timer gets down to zero. But here's a look at what's on my third page. The deepest cuts, right? Like the beer pour or Sonic the Hedgehog. I don't, I don't use that one enough, actually. A baby crying. I used to... 
Okay, that's enough. I used to have that one loaded um, in case I had to leave the stream immediately at night. If my son woke up, I had to go put him back to bed. <laughs> um, or sometimes you hear the dog barking, or sometimes the internet connection is not great. And it does feel like that. And it also feels like this. And of course, the NBC theme. And then there's um, obviously just the different beds of music I can play. Kind of the lead in to a live stream. Check this out. The timer, it's ticking down. We're almost at that minute mark. All right, so it's going to go ding, ding, ding. Watch. Just kind of nice, right? To have that on your radar if you want to do a timed segment, if you want to have that in the background. The last thing I'll show you here from the hardware standpoint of the soundboard is let's say this is the intro to my live stream. And then I, I want to say, all right, let's start the stream right now. So what I'll do is I'll hit the live open. I'll hit the 8-bit jams. Start this one. Stop this one. It'll kind of fade out perfectly. So let's start the live stream. Broadcasting live, live and right? worldwide. Here's Brody Brazil. Not bad. Okay, so now that I've shown you all that, let's take a peek at Farago. Okay, so this is what the software looks like. It's pretty straightforward. You could click on any one of these clips and it plays as simple as that. But not only that, it'll actually show you here the waveform. You can start it late. You can end it early. Kind of you can mark in and out of your clip. You can also have it fade in, fade out. You can have two different volume levels for this clip. If you're interested, you can color coordinate it. You can set it to loop or play solo, right? Like cancel everything out if this one plays. You can have it either pause or not or start from the beginning every time you hit the button. Or you can have it only play while the button is being pressed. Like for example here, I have to click and hold down. As soon as I let go, right, it goes away. Then you can switch the output device. For me, it's the Universal Audio Thunderbolt, it's the Apollo Twin X I'm playing it on, and I'm playing it through channels five and six. And and real quick, the reason I'm doing that is so that I can separate here my mic volume from another mic input volume from the actual volume of my Mac, like anything I play through the computer itself, versus the soundboard here has its own um, has its own separate levels. So like for example, there you can see it's playing through the soundboard channel and just that but so I, I could I could push buttons all all of these different sounds have keystrokes like crickets are n so here's the button n right and I want to stop it I do that there's the casino sound effect it's the letter M okay and I can stop that but what I'm doing here is I'm actually taking the stream deck and I'm just programming it to do two things if I hit the Farago button it's bringing that app to the forefront of of my screen, which it does need to be. And then I go back here and, and let's say we'll, we'll choose a longer song here from uh, like page, page three. Let, let's go Christmas time, right? So look, there it is. It's playing. And if I want to play something else, or if I want to stop that, there we go. If I want to do a slow build song, all right, there's the slow build song right there. But let's go back to the 8-bit jams. Right, so all it's doing here is Stream Deck is assigning a keystroke for every single button that you're seeing. It's literally as simple as that. Start, stop. This is not 100% native. For example, if Farago is not at the forefront of my screen, um, like right now, if I have my uh, Universal Audio console up and I go back here and I, I hit that, up. Oh. Yeah, that ain't good. It's not playing, right? So I always have this button on all of my pages so I can make sure I can make sure that Farago is up. Uh, but there's a ton of other things here I can obviously do with the Stream Deck. For example, one thing I always like to do before I start a live stream is do a speed test. So I, I hit that button on the Stream Deck. Here's my speed test. Let's see how this goes, by the way. I'm recording this. I'm not live streaming. Whoa, the download is only at 100? feel like I might have to reset the uh, Ethernet switch over there. That That's not right. And the upload right now, come on, no pressure. It's hitting 40, right? 40 megs. And, and that's kind of where it should be here normally on my connection. Usually, I'm looking at like 
nine hundred down and and forty something up right there. So gonna have to check that out. But luckily, I don't need the download speed as much as I need the upload speed here to do live streams. But anyway, um, you can obviously this video is not about you know the stream deck, but you can assign so many things. There's also this, which is a whole separate video I have on my channel, how to use BitFocus Companion with Stream Deck with your A10 Mini Pro ISO, which is the switcher I'm using here on my desk to control everything. But uh, you see all of the different buttons and options I have here. For example, I don't know what Over the Shoulder 2 is, but if I hit it, oh, well, we were talking about a Sharks and Red Wings night shift program the post game show the post game stream that i do uh, but then i go back to well there's that and i think the real one i wanted was oh yeah that so anyway uh this is my a10 page these are all shortcuts right here to control everything i do with the switcher i keep that separate from the sound effect page one sound effect page two and sound effect page three and then there's the a10 so i i don't want to get too many pages here with the Stream Deck XL, I feel like you really can get lost in all that. And again, here's the other great reason. You see how busy this is right now. If I want to utilize all this, and I also still want to be able to switch things uh, with a screen that never changes, I've got it all right here on the Mini. I want to come on camera just like this. Bang. I just push that on the Mini. So you can use two different Stream Decks. But anyway, hopefully all or at least some of that makes sense. How I use Farago with Stream Deck to make what I think is the perfect soundboard for me. Um, that right there, the amount of buttons that you just saw, that that for me, quite honestly, is enough. That like that's enough buttons. <laughs> some people need twice this amount or you know a huge amount. You could get lost in that too. I feel like, you know, three pages of sound effects plus all my ATEM stuff, I can get to it quickly. I can comprehend it quickly in a real-time live situation. So again, hopefully that helped. Let me know if you use a setup like this or if you can recommend something different in the comments section below.